Hello everyone, this is Husker Eurocat welcoming you back to the San Francisco franchise here on Madden Football. Today the 49ers are playing the Seattle Seahawks for their second meeting of the season. Seattle put the hurt on the Vikings last week, beating them up 39-3 at home. So I guess that loss to the Niners a couple of weeks ago didn't set too well with them. I feel kind of sorry for the Vikes. Eh, kinda. Nothing has changed since that meeting at CenturyLink Field. The Seahawks still have one of the most impressive teams in the NFL. Once again, I think the running game behind Jarek McKinnon will be the focus of the 49ers offense since Jimmy seems to be having issues against really good pass defenses. I say that, though, he had a better day passing the ball against the Seattle secondary than against the Broncos they played last week. And it should have been easier to pass on the Bronco defense. At this point, Jimmy just needs to have nothing but good games going forward because the rest of the season is, well, <laughs> brutal. I would think, though, it would be a whole lot easier running the ball on the number 23 rush defense in the league than try to crack that passing D. We'll have to see what happens in this game. Can Jimmy keep from throwing his renowned picks during this one? Will the ground game have to come up big in this one or will the defense come through once again? The teams have taken the field and appear to be ready for the kickoff, so let's join them as the 49ers take on the Seahawks here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. San Francisco starts out the game with the ball at their own 25-yard line out of the I formation. And Tayshaw Jones is in there as halfback takes it around the right side for an 8-yard pickup. Garoppolo throws over the middle to McKinnon, and he has the first down out to the 44-yard line. Washington gets the call, runs over the right side and gets a four yard gain. Washington with the call again, goes left and has the first down. Inside Seattle territory, Garoppolo is sacked. Back inside 49er territory at the 47. Back to pass again, throws over the middle and it's knocked away. Bryce Callahan getting a hand in there, and it is Seattle ball at the 20-yard line. Wilson, back to pass, throws, right side, caught. Doug Baldwin, first down, out to the 46. Rawls takes it up the middle, and he gets to midfield. Second and five. The fake handoff, and a throw is almost complete. You should have seen the hit. That gut put on Doug Baldwin, and that one is intercepted. Ross Cockrell takes the interception back inside Seattle territory. Wilson just didn't get enough height on that, didn't arc it well enough, and Doug Baldwin couldn't get at the ball. Cockrell makes the first interception of the game. Well, let's hope there isn't any more. Garoppolo throws complete to Jordan inside the 30-yard line. The pass this time goes out to Colin Jeter. He avoids a tackle and inside the 15. Now Kittle in motion. McKinnon goes out to the left, and he has the touchdown. San Francisco takes the lead. If you take a look at this on the Jumbotron, Bobby Wagner tries to make an impact there at the goal line, but it's just too late, and McKinnon crosses and gives San Francisco their first score. Now Seattle trying to answer back at the 19-yard line. The fake handoff, and the pass over the middle is complete to Doug Baldwin. First down at the 39. Rawls. Takes it over the left side numbers and gets to the 43. On second and six, the give is to Rawls. He goes over the 50-yard line and that 
Moves the chains for the Seahawks. Lacey up the middle and gets inside the 45. Second and six out of the shotgun. A direct snap to Lacey up the middle. He has the first down. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter with your score seven to nothing, San Francisco. The Seahawks are on the move. Rawls in the backfield and he gets annihilated. Charles Tapper with the big hit in the backfield. Again, Rawls goes up the middle and he gets the first down on second effort. Second and 11 now. Lacey has the ball out into the numbers on the right side and gets to the 21. Third and six. Wilson to Darbo, touchdown Seattle. Akello Witherspoon trying to play a little catch up, can't even come close. Diving at the five yard line, but not making the tackle. Freeing up Amara Darbo to get into the end zone. The Seahawks tied up seven apiece now with almost seven minutes to go in the first half. McKinnon goes up the middle and has himself a five yard gain. McKinnon, no, that's a fake and oh! Lester Jordan misses the home run ball. If that would have been caught, that most likely would have been a touchdown. Jones with the catch over the middle. Third and nine now, Kittle out to midfield and has the first down. Garoppolo gives to McKinnon around the left side and he is inside Seattle territory for third and four. Garoppolo is dumped in the backfield. On fourth and 14, the punt by Marquette King is out of bounds off the side of his foot. And that puts the Seahawks in excellent field position at the 46. Knocked away by Navarro Bowman. Second and 10. The give is to Rawls. He goes up the hash marks and gets inside 49er territory, which brings us to the two-minute warning. Third and five. Lacey cannot get to the sticks, and it is with a minute 45 seconds left. 49er ball, and Bell makes the catch and is out to the 49-yard line. Jimmy with good blocking this time, and Bell working against Richard Sherman makes the sure catch. Garoppolo throws, and it's intercepted. K.J. Wright takes it out of the air. Oh, my goodness, and where was that ball going? He had McKinnon out in the left flat for a sure completion and an absolutely sure first down. And now it's Seattle ball at the 45-yard line. A short completion over the middle to Thomas. Third and seven out of the shotgun. Wilson fakes the handoff and it's knocked down. Reuben Foster is gonna kick himself over that one because that should have been a pick six. Garoppolo going long and hits Jordan at the 40 yard line. Second and 10 now. Garoppolo throws complete to Kenny Bell. He's inside the 10 yard line. First and goal. 49ers. Garoppolo back to pass again, and he has it intercepted by Delano Hill. Oh my goodness, and again, he had McKinnon in the left flat and could have had an easy touchdown. Where is he throwing the football? Now with 22 seconds left in the first half, Rawls Runs over the left numbers, has lots of room, and is out in the clear, and he gets stopped by Ross Cockrell. With 14 seconds left, and my goodness, how did Doug Baldwin get so wide open? He's inside the red zone. The pass, this time, 
goes out to Rawls and is incomplete. That brings on Justin Tucker. And he drills a 35-yard field goal. So the score at halftime is 10-7 Seahawks. Well, that was just an ugly end to the first half. Jimmy again is having a tough game. Two picks in situations where the 49ers were in scoring position. Eurocat Baby has Coach Shanahan at all given any thought to how he's going to get this offense untracked. Well, Husker, he did acknowledge that Jimmy did have a bad first half, and it was his feeling that it was due to pressure from the Seattle defense getting in the backfield. His thought process was how to get the O-line to better protect the quarterback. For that matter, the running game seems to be suffering the same issue. He said that they plan on making some adjustments to their blocking scheme going forward that will hopefully give Jimmy a bit more time to operate before he makes a decision on what to do with the ball. He also told me he felt they were moving the ball well. It's just at times, Jimmy seems to be trying a bit too hard to make throws that he shouldn't be making. The defense is fine and he's happy with that side of the equation. Coach Carroll said that in order for Seattle to be successful, they need two things. The running game will need to keep getting yards and the defense needs to continue to make big plays. In order to make that happen, he feels that they need to keep winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. If they can do that, he said they may have a glimmer of hope in this game. Thank you for that report, and I can hardly disagree with Coach Carroll on that. Seattle seems to be winning in the trenches today, and all we can do is hope that the adjustments to the 49er blocking scheme will be good ones. Stay with us to find out as the second half coverage starts when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Levi's Stadium here in San Francisco as the 49ers and the Seahawks get ready for second-half action. Seattle starts from their own 25-yard line. Wilson back to pass, throws over the middle to Baldwin for a short gain. Second and six. Rawls up the middle and can't get out of the backfield. The middle of that line was just all stopped up. Third and nine now on the shotgun. Wilson throws over the top of Rashawn Evans and makes the completion for a first down. Lacey outside the numbers on the left side and gets to the 38. Third and seven now. Wilson throws deep and it's intercepted. The second time by Ross Cockrell. This time Cockrell had just had position on Baldwin and he makes the grab for the interception. Wilson just threw it a little bit too deep and the ball is going back the other way. Garoppolo throws deep and it's intercepted. Brad McDougal with the interception. And that's what you get, folks, when you throw into double coverage. The ball intended for Lester Jordan didn't get to him. So on first and 10, Wilson hands off to Rawls, and he's over the 35. Now on third down, five yards to go. Wilson throws, and it's complete to Darbo over the 50-yard line. First down. Seattle, Rawls gets it, goes up to hash marks and inside the 45. Second and four. Lacey this time has the first down and a little more. Getting down to the 36. The handoff goes to Lacey again and he gets tackled only for a three yard gain. Third and seven. Wilson throws long and it is complete. Doug Baldwin in the end zone, touchdown Seattle. The battle continues between Cockrell and Baldwin, and Baldwin just got 
the better of them this time. The ball was placed perfectly out front so he could make the touchdown grab. 17 to seven is your score now. Into the fourth quarter after multiple three and outs by each team and that one is incomplete. Thomas can't make the grab. Pass over the middle to Lockett, and he has the completion for a first down. Now at the 36. Lacey up the middle for a short gain and is hurt on the play. Third and six. Wilson back to pass, has all day, throws long, and it is caught by Baldwin. A one-handed grab, folks. And he got the better again of Ross Cockrell. And they're inside the 15. Rawls goes up the hash marks and inside the 10. Now on third and two from the five, Wilson throws. And it's caught by Jimmy Graham in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Wilson with excellent protection finds a big target in the end zone and Jimmy Graham makes the grab for the touchdown. This one is fast, getting out of control. 24 to seven is your score. Bell takes it at the one yard line and has, oh, and that closed up so fast. Delano Hill with the tackle. Garoppolo back to pass. And he goes long and hits Lester Jordan at the 29. The throw this time is out to Colin Jeter in the flats. He slips the tackle and is down to the 10 yard line. Two minutes left, Garoppolo is sacked. Third and goal from the 16. Throws to the end zone and it's ricochets and K.J. Wright has his second interception of the game. Garoppolo making another bad decision as he had Lester Jordan in the corner of the end zone all alone. And he tried to hit George Kittle in traffic. What a mistake. Wilson calls his own number and is tackled by Navarro Bowman. Third and five. A minute left. And that one is knocked away by Bowman. With only 50 seconds left, the 49ers are gonna have to do something big. And a throw to Jordan inside the 10 yard line. Garoppolo makes an excellent throw. And the throw to Colin Jeter and he is in the end zone. A seven yard touchdown pass. That brings the score to 24-14 and King doesn't kick it far enough on the onside kick, and it is Seattle ball. All they have to do is take a knee. This one will be over. 24-14, the Seahawks coming into Levi Stadium and leaving with the win. It seems that Seattle ended up getting a little revenge this week. The last time they played, it was the 49ers getting the upper hand. This time, San Francisco just couldn't stop the Seattle offense. They seem to be mixing it up a lot in this game, and although the pass was working well for them, Seattle's rushing game was gashing the 49er D at times. They ran it 29 times in the game, so that shows that they were comfortable with the running performance today. I just wish that Garoppolo could refrain from throwing into tough situations. It's getting him into lots of trouble and obviously not doing the team any good in the process. There were at least 17 points that got left on the table because of the throwing into coverage. I just wanted to yell at the top of my voice, Hey, Jimmy, Jarek is in the flats for the touchdown. Or... Um, Jordan is in the corner of the end zone. All I know is that it's real hard on a defense when your quarterback keeps giving the ball to the other team. Another bad thing is that Seattle put the brakes on the running game. 
28 yards is not what McKinnon has been getting used to here in the past few weeks. Since they were loading the box on a lot of plays, if Jimmy had been on his game, it could have been a lot different. The receivers did have a number of drops, and that one that Jordan had where he missed the gimme touchdown pass, oh, that just hurt. That didn't help things in the long run, but I don't think that was the real issue here. Jimmy just hasn't been, well, Jimmy this season. Taking a look at his stats, he's leading the pack in interceptions thrown with 29 so far this season. That is a lot. I'm sure that he wishes he could put his finger on it as well, but that kind of thing needs to stop if San Francisco has any hope of going the distance this season. I understand that the defense kind of took a hit today, but if the offense had been doing its part, we may have seen a much different outcome. It wasn't that the defense didn't make any big plays, they did. But the way the run defense got gashed today was definitely not in character. I don't think that anyone told Bowman that he's getting older because he seems to be getting better every single week. Let's just hope that he plays this well for the rest of the season. Well, with two weeks left in the regular season, what is the playoff race looking like? Starting with the AFC in the north, we have the Bengals and the Steelers tied for the lead at 10-4. In the south, the Texans hold a one-game advantage over the Titans. In the east, at 7-7, seven and uh, seven, we have a three-way tie for the lead with the Bills, Dolphins, and Patriots pulling up the rear. And finally in the west is the Raiders and Broncos battling for the lead. In the NFC, starting in the north, we have the Bears that are running away with that division and the lead in the NFL, period. In the South, we have the Panthers leading the Falcons by a game. In the East, we have the Cowboys and Eagles leading the Giants by a game. And lastly, in the West, we have the now tied Hawks and Niners. Things are tight in a lot of divisions. So the AFC playoff picture, if the season were to end today, it would be the Texans and Bengals with a bye week, followed by the Raiders and 7-7 seven and seven Bills, with the Steelers and Titans holding down the wild card spots. In the NFC, we would have, of course, the Bears, with home field advantage and the Seahawks taking the other bye week, the Panthers and Cowboys taking the other divisions, and the 49ers and Eagles getting in via wild card spots. The Niners have a little work to do before the end of the season if they want to secure the NFC West crown and maybe, just maybe, a bye week along the way. It's not going to be an easy road though since their next game is against the Chicago Bears. Thankfully they have the Bears in Levi Stadium and that should be worth at least something. There's a reason the Bears stand at 12-2 on the season. They have the number one rush offense and defense in the league and hold down spots in the top five in overall offense and defense. They have lost Cam Newton for the season, which they really haven't lost a whole lot because Mitchell Trubisky is in at quarterback and he is outstanding himself. This is the game where San Francisco welcomes home a couple of former players for the weekend in left tackle Joe Staley and defensive tackle DeForest Buckner. Both outstanding players and adding to the strength of the Bears right now. I say right now because while the O-line is great, they're not young by any means. And if the Bears are going to go the distance, it has to be real soon with this bunch of veterans. They have nine pro bowlers on the team, if my count is accurate, and six of them are on offense. 
this could be a nightmare for Jimmy G if he doesn't have the best game of the season. Once again, that brings an end to this week's presentation of the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it too. And make sure that you subscribe and click on that bell for notifications of upcoming videos as they come out. The Niners got the tables turned on them by the Seahawks this week. And by the looks of things, it only gets tougher with the Bears coming to town. The battle is on for the NFC West crown and San Francisco is faced with another must-win scenario. They are in the playoffs as a wild card for sure, but more is at stake now than just a spot in the playoffs. Can Jarek McKinnon find room against this very tough front seven in Chicago? Will the defense be able to shut down Pro Bowl halfback Jordan Howard and the number one rush offense? Will the Bears have to pass for the win? Not a small task against this Niners secondary. To find out, be with me as the 49ers invite the Bears to Levi's Stadium. For Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew here, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.